Hi, this is Dr. Nick from the ECG Academy with Chalk Talk number seven. Remember, Chalk Talks assume you know the basics, but I've labeled this strip as advanced because we're going to be talking about some advanced physiologic topics in this tracing. And remember, it's important to understand the physiology because that allows you to read much more complex tracings. So let's get started. Uh, this is a, a Holter monitor that I picked up and it's three simultaneous leads, of course. So we're going to get uh, get started with uh, looking at the forest. And I think what uh, stands out very clearly in the in this strip is that there's a pause here. Um, there seems to be a regular rhythm going along. And if we try to measure the rate, let's start with this heavy line. We'll call it 300, 150, 175. It's just about 75 beats per minute, just exactly. Um, so we have the regular rhythm of 75 beats per minute. If you happen to notice the QRS complex is rather wide, so there looks like a bundle branch block is going on. The, the uh, duration is at least 160 milliseconds. And when we start looking for P waves, we can look in any leads, and I think it's clear to see that there does appear to be a P wave in front of every beat. And if we take out our little mini calipers and um, look at the PR interval, it looks like the PR interval is just about 200 milliseconds, and it looks to be quite regular. Let's see, is it 200? Yeah, it's just about 200. And then what happens is, it looks like there's a P wave here that doesn't get conducted. Hmm. Well, all right, let's, let's, um, let's explore this a little bit further. We'll take our big calipers, and um, we'll... Um, move this up here and see if the R to R intervals are regular and in fact they do appear to be regular and then let's see what happens with the next beat when we put the uh, calipers down it looks like the QRS comes right on time now that's interesting and they keep on going um, so we have a, a P wave that appears to have not conducted we'll get rid of that and start drawing so we have um, regular PR intervals that are uh, fixed, and we have an R to R interval, a pause, that's two times the previous R to R interval, and then the next PR interval following the pause is the same. Under, and, and underlying, you've got this bundle branch block. And so people would be tempted to think that this is, what, type 2 second degree AV block, like Mobitz 2 block, because you have a fixed PR interval, you have a P wave that fails to conduct. The R to R is exactly the same as two times the previous R to R, so it all fits, right? So, I, geez, I should have labeled this basic. Hmm. Well, that's not the whole story. And uh, we'll have to go back and talk about um, how to, to look for small details. Remember, first you look at the forest, then the trees, but there's the small details that will give you the answer every time. So what do are, what are those the ECG look like? You've got this P wave that has high frequency signals because so it looks kind of spiky. And then you've got T waves that have a very low frequency signal content and it looks very smooth. And if you look at these P wave, uh, these T waves, I beg your pardon, they looked very smooth. And you see this one here. Now, what's interesting is there's something kind of in the tail end of that T wave. And if you look at this lead, um, this T wave appears to have this particular shape. I don't know what you might call it, a biphasic shape. And then this T wave, the shape kind of changes a little bit. It kind of goes up a little at the end. Now, what is that? Well, this is the lead that shows it the best. This is a P wave. That's right. Maybe you didn't notice that before. Maybe you guys who are good at reading EKGs might have picked that out. But here is a P wave. Now, what the heck is that? Um, it doesn't exactly come on time because the P wave should have landed here someplace. So what is it? It's a premature atrial contraction or an APC or whatever you want to call it, but it's premature. And it falls in a point after the T wave and it obviously doesn't conduct. Well, 
Blocked PACs or non-conducted PACs occur quite frequently, and we don't really think much of it. But there's a concept that you have to understand in this uh, video that I want to get across, and it's called concealed conduction. Concealed conduction is um, an electrophysiologic phenomenon that allows us to see conduction into a part of the cardiac conduction system that's not apparent. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's just kind of review a little bit of the physiology here. Okay, this is an animation that I put together uh, in the good old days. Um, and what you have here in the high right atrium is the sinus node that fires, and you have atrial depolarization that spreads across both atria. Uh, remember, there's a Bachmann's bundle behind the aortic root that connects the two atria together. And then here you have the AV node, which its job is to delay the signal slightly. That gives the atria a chance to contract and push the blood through the heart valves. So there's a little bit of delay that's supposed to be there. Remember, normal PR interval should be 120 to 200 milliseconds. And then the signal propagates down the His bundle in the Purkinje system. Okay, but the AV node has a very interesting uh, behavior. Let me get rid of that. With the AV node, I'm going to erase this stuff here for a second. And with the AV node, um, there there is a period of time um, after the AV node fires, um, where the AV node cannot accept another signal. Remember, at faster rates, the AV node conducts worse. That's why with fast atrial arrhythmias, you can, can get conduction block. Um, and that's because the AV nodal cells have a, a special characteristic known as decremental conduction, which means that the faster you stimulate it, the worse it it conducts. And that has to do with the fact that the AV nodal cells uh, conduct uh, or bring calcium into the cell, and the calcium currents are the predominant means of the cellular depolarization, remember, with the action potential. So the upstroke of, a, of an AV nodal cell is relatively slow because it's a calcium-dependent cell. And because of that, if you bombard the AV node with rapid signals, those signals will not get down. So, of course, this early atrial event hits the AV node at a point when it's refractory and it won't conduct. It says, nope, I'm sorry, I'm busy conducting the last one. I'm not ready to take this one yet. Okay, no big deal. PACs frequently block. But then why did this beat block? Why did this atrial event failed to conduct it, made it look like that this was a second degree type 2 AV block, but it's not. And the reason is this concealed conduction. The idea behind concealed conduction is that if one impulse, um, let me pick a different color, if one impulse gets into the AV node, it may penetrate partially into the AV node, but then fail to fail to exit the other end of it. But the fact that it got into the AV node, even for a short period of time, it leaves those AV nodal cells refractory. It, it uh, means that those AV nodal cells have to wait a whole nother cycle before they will conduct the following beat. And so we call this concealed conduction. It means that this beat got into the AV node and it left the AV node refractory, even though it didn't come out the other end, its effects are still present because when this beat comes down, the AV nodal cells have remained refractory and, and this beat blocks as well. Even though there was a long interval between this last Q, conducted QRS complex and this P wave. Okay, so this, this fooled you. What you really have here are two PACs um, because if you looked really carefully, this P wave actually looks a little bit different than this P wave and it occurs a little bit earlier than we'd expect. If, you, if I didn't want to show you that with my calipers because it might have given it away. Um, so what you have are two premature atrial events, both of which encounter a refractory AV node. So what you really have are two blocked PACs in a row, two sequential non-conducted PACs, and it's not true AV block in the strictest sense of the word. And so it, although it appears to be second-degree AV block, it's really not because the AV node is kind of behaving normally. Now, it's possible 
that this patient has some significant AV nodal disease, and it's even possible that the block occurred further down in the conduction system. I'm not saying that that's impossible, but what I'm saying is that if you're going to read an EKG diagnosis, in this case, we're not really dealing with true second degree AV block. You have to recognize that this P wave um, throws the whole thing off. So that was the little hidden um, uh, fly in the ointment, so to speak, that, um, uh, that, that you need to be able to recognize and label this trip correctly. So um, that was uh, kind of fun, and, uh, and I enjoyed showing that to you. I hope that helps you understand the, the cardiac physiology a little bit better. And, um, and that's what I'm trying to do with these Rhythm Chalk Talks. So tell all your friends um, to log on, subscribe to my channel. I'd like to really try to get my uh, videos to be number one on the Internet. So help me out. And uh, keep uh, watching for more Chalk Talks. And, re and remember to log on to ecgacademy.com so I can help you become an ECG expert too.